Hi everybody, my name is Jerome right here, and um, I'm here through um, on my Jeronification channel through an ongoing paranormal experience and encounter that I've been having that allows me to get a higher understanding and a sense of um, awareness to our ancestors and how what has happened in the past is linking to that of today and this knowledge being privileged to a select few and um, in these videos I kind to um, get drawn to trying to show you what is around you and um, what you should be aware of and um, and in doing so hoping to enlighten you about the um, the ancient secret that's present today that actually derives from that of our ancient ancestors of not yesterday but far yesterdays all right so this here is the Peking University's um, symbol it was changed in the early 1900s I believe or late 1800s from that of what it actually initially was um, I'm, I'm, I was trying to I was drawn to this to this image because I was looking at the Drupa stones all right this is um and I was looking at the Drupa stones and the Drupa stones link me to this amazing right now one thing and you go from one ancient find to something that is more so more um up to date and and here you find yourself in explaining trying to explain what's going on here but anyway so I spent most of yesterday off and on after I realized that I'm attracted to this symbol and I'm, I'm instinctively I know what it means um, I said to myself I said well I found this from the first place from the Jupiter stone so so I'm saying to myself then then this must be a symbolization also of the Jupiter stone so I started looking at the Peking University and then lo and behold there's these other universities and I start running across uh, similar this is the Peking University Science um, Center and this is the Tanakala University or whatever. and there is a another symbol there and as I'm drawing I'm drawing more and more into this I'm saying to myself I mean they're like a eerie reminder of that to me of the um of the Jupiter stones and you're probably saying well how in the world can you get to this from Jupiter stones I'll, I mean I'll explain in a few here but anyway when I look at this this symbol here the Peking University I believe it's in um, Beijing China this reminds me of Leonardo da Vinci's Vivitruvian man just in a more simple form that's what this reminds me of Leonardo's Vivitruvian man because <clears throat> I get the same vibe of energy from this as I do from Leonardo's Vivitruvian man okay now um, I googled this to see who made this who created this and um, what does it mean and at best the only thing that you can get on this is that it was changed because the original um, um, symbol was um, it was the it was the original symbol would have have been for the Imperial University of um, of Peking that was a, the initial symbol in the in the name of this university before it was overthrown before it was invaded hold on let me see the Imperial University of Peking was set up in July 3rd 1898 as a result of a hundred days reform also called the reform movement of, of 1898 which was launched by Kang Yui and other reformers under the um, auspices of Imperial Guags and suppressed by the um, the Empress Duagar Sixi. Um, the educational guidelines of the university prescribe combined uses of Chinese and Western knowledge its um its watchword was wide cultivation of talents with the um, emphasis of current affairs the university was closed when the eight power allied forces now get this now the eight powered allied forces aggressive troops sent by britain 
the United States, Germany, France, um, Tsarist Russia, Japan, Italy, and Australia invaded Beijing in 1900 and reopened on um, on December 17, 1902. So this university was something else. It was an imperial university of the Peking from before, and then all of something it was invaded by these foreign countries and then this symbol emerged afterwards now you can google this for yourself because I, I, I went to with no wits end I googled and I tried to find out what does this symbol mean and the only the, at best what you get is that um, the original symbol the lines did not conform to what is traditionally um, um, set in lines on, on, on these symbols so therefore it was changed there's nothing else no other explanation for this at all now let me tell you what I got from this when I looked at this again I told you that it reminds me of Leonardo's Da Vinci's Vitruvian Man which actually has more information than this but then and again, this has a lot of information in itself as well, too. Let me tell you, as soon as I looked at this, 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 this symbol, what happened to me? When I looked at this symbol, in fact, it has, at the bottom, it has 19-something on the bottom, I guess, or 18. No, it has 18-something on the bottom anyway. But when you... When you um, Google this image, just Google um, symbol for the Peking University. I believe it's 1898 or something. But anyway, this is what we have. This is what I see when I look at this. When I looked at this, it was immediate. I seen the long arms of an ape, of a monkey. The torso of a monkey. The legs of a monkey. And the head of a monkey. We have our eight. Then to this side, which it would be the left side, I seen the city the seating body of uh, the sitting body of a woman. This is her hind, her legs are outstretched. Here's her torso and her outstretched arm. And here's her head. To the right, beginning at the head of a man, the outstretched arm of the man, the torso of the man, the hind parts of the man, and the man's outstretched legs. So, <clears throat> I'm looking at this, then I'm including the colors through the blood, which is represented by the red, and the white, which is represented as semen, through the blood and the semen, these beings were bridged over each other and calls for the likenesses that are in China today. So, look, monkey, ape, calls for creation of man and woman, and then they're bridged over each other. Now, it doesn't stop there, because that's too simple, because you can see the monkey now, and now I, can give you, I gave you woman, and then I gave you man. Okay, that's that's something simple there. If you take this and turn it over, which makes this more complex, is that now we're dealing with a leaf or tree of life. And that's what this is symbolizing. Now, if you were to Google this for you can you be hard pressed. I bet you that there's not a student in China that can tell you what their symbol means or represents. It's just a given. Almost it reminds me of like the cross in Christianity, where you didn't know what that meant until I told you for the first time here in my videos that the cross represents the cross referencing of mankind's genetics. And this is equal to that. This is what this is all symbolizing, where mankind, the origins of mankind came from. Now, as I look more into this, and, 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 and I, as I research 
what is going on here and I look at other symbols let me let me bring this back over okay this takes me to I start looking at other symbols like I told you before with that of China and these are um, symbols from the other universities I mean I'm science and, 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 and which, again a same symbol where you have the serpent the snake bridged over that of the tree of life and it shows you what is actually happening here as I showed you in my other videos now I'm going to show you something as you see this, the, um, the leaves okay the snake and the snake let me see if I can find my Egyptian file here I believe that I have it here and what is being stated there is the same thing that is actually being stated here with the um, serpent showing you that this guy is bridged over and then there's the flower and, okay and the shepherd's crop is as it's telling you the same exact thing in a lesser shape and form if you know what the founding stones are are the founding building blocks of the creation of mankind then this symbol is easy read to you because this creature played a major part in that in the evolution of mankind's coming into existence and this is why you see the snake symbol global everywhere and you should see some of my other videos to get more into it. I'm not going to go backwards with this but it, I assure you that I'm on point with with everything that I'm actually stating here um, my Egyptian file and I can let me let me let me see if I can find I'm gonna put this symbol up here first. Well hold on, let me leave that symbol there. Let me see if I can find my Egyptian file. It should be right there. Uh, this is another this is what this is also stating here. Where is my pencil? Tree of Life. Here's the Tree of Life here on an Egyptian glyph, and I have a video out on that as well too. See this tree? See the snake? Shows you that the snake is bridged over the Tree of Life, representing a reptilian presence. And remember, I showed you that alien-looking guy right here with the limb going down through his eye, and then down here, there's a horn being encrypted into the splicing of the. I mean the the the, the split of the tree limb here right in there okay see my video on this and um, this whole glyph here could be read and you see the, the leaf from the tree of life there it shows you a genetic splicing and that's what this is all about it shows you how mankind was actually genetically created and spliced over by these creatures and this is why you see these snakes with these leaves and lions and all of these creatures showing you that there's a splicing this represents a splicing and it's a story that tells you how these genes were spliced and split and manipulated and that's what this is all about and I'm telling you that this symbol is a symbol of that which actually derived out of Egypt. Now, even some of these symbols here, this is another university, the Pakawa, whatever university. <clears throat> you see, and I know that these are words to people, by the way, but the symbolizations in these words can be linked. The way these, these symbols are, are created 
can be leaked to that of am I holding this up right? Yeah. To images on the drooper stones. There and here. The writings on this are very similar to actually what is here. And then not only on top of that, it's linked to what is here. These symbols share here, there, and I believe right here. Share a likeness to that of what is here. Which may seem, well you say, well it's just writing, you know. Yeah, but back as you go earlier in time, these writings had more of a symbolic message than those of today. And where this stuff came from has a meaning that references man's kind's genetic blueprint. As in each one of these levels, you have this reptilian monkey shows you the creatures that this guy was bridged over and how eventually this guy's genetics became the vessel that carried man's kind's genes throughout to where the likenesses actually became here and then it keeps going on and on and on and it shows you how through this guy, this reptilian monkey, how mankind was created, what he was bridged over with and where these genes went and then this is what this is all about people so if you have a trouble trouble believing that there are multiple records in Egyptian that tells you the same exact thing there you again you have that same reptilian ape identical to that guy there shows you he spliced and it shows you the paths from which these genetics went and at the head and tail where they were spliced and through which creatures were created again that squiggly guy that snake these lines and these symbols can be linked to uh, do I have that printed out to this see this that same exact thing with that flower there, I mean that leaf, the same exact thing showing you the splicing. Look, the same exact thing, people. The same exact message. My thing is with this, is this is the same exact thing that this is actually stating. Shows you how mankind genetically became, and they took it and put it in a symbol. And for those of you, now think about it though for a minute. People of China and people of other parts in the regions of the world. Why would a symbol be on a university looking like this? Think about it. I want you to digest that for a minute. And then here I come along with the message that I have. Not just here people, but I'm telling you, everywhere. Why would this symbol be there, people? And all of these other bizarre symbols in China, and, and globally, not just China now, globally, I can link all of these symbols globally, from our kings and queens, from our royalty, anywhere in the world, to that of the beginning. You know why? Because it is all referencing that of our ancestry of how we were genetically created and through the bizarre art of our world the same exact thing this is, look at my videos I have a hundred plus probably a hundred and something videos here people look at my other videos these bizarre symbols such as this bizarre artwork which is also in China globally all of a something now makes sense to us people. You know why? Because it all references mankind's true origins and genetic becoming. And that's why 
and China, the dragon, and that's and that's another thing too. These symbols of where we where we are I'm coming from now, the birds, the dragons, um, the lions, and all of these symbols globally, almost like mascots, our world's mascots are, of these continents, are creatures that genetically contributed to the genetic bridging of mankind to alter mankind's genes from their originating states which was that of monkey later Africans later Chinese or uh, Egyptian Chinese Asian people and it all shows you and references how from these likenesses came all of the different cultures and likenesses of mankind down throughout to where we are today to our white um, our Caucasian counterparts. No one has ever discovered a verifiable record or knew of this. It was just saying it's selective process or it's just evolution, all that. People, I'm telling you that there is a precise record that shows you how it was done and it was known all alone and it's concealed all right let me get to the drupa stones because that's what caused for all of this in the first place let's go to the drupa stones this to bring me here to that uh, china chinese people please look at that and um look at my videos and if you want to know who you uh, identify with who you are, send me viral. I can show you who you are and how you genetically became. Okay? Now, let me show you how I arrived at that Chinese people. This is what brought me to China. The Drupa Stone is what made me look at the symbols of your university. Alright. Now what do we have here? Now, for the most part, I know that through the reptile, dinosaur, came man. And that's what this is stating. They're saying from this creature came this creature. Alright, through a sequence of precise creation. Now, I'm telling you from space, came life. There's records of it. You see all of those fiery rocks that they're talking about in UFOs, and you see men in rocks or in, and look like they're in space vessels traveling through space with it trailed off with a ball of fire. What it is telling you that people is that from space, from space rock, microorganisms such as these organisms came to our world, landed our world's oceans. This is why it's important that there's water. These fiery rocks from space landed our world and our world's oceans. Life was spawned and eventually evolved to a point through the creatures depicted and man emerged. And this is where we're at today. This is what this is all stating, people. All every record of our world, this is what this is stating. Now You're concealed from the truth by your religion, by science, which is also um, governed by religion, and the fact that now you have people like um, UFO theorists, ancient and alien theorists, these people now have you with your head in the skies to where Everything is now fictional, like it was in the past, mythical beings and all of that. So now 
here's we're in an era where religion is fading off where your eyes are starting to try to open to this and say well you know what maybe God did not create us and not this and that and the third and maybe this and now you have UFO theorists having you thinking that these little guys are aliens no I'm not going to tell you who this guy is I know who this guy is I know who, I know what angels are because I know the truth. Through my paranormal experience and encounter, I can divulge the identity of this guy. I can show you who he is. And in fact, at one point in my life, I seen that guy. Yeah, I did, people. I'll tell you about it another time. Send me viral if you want to know all of this. Send me viral. Okay? But I seen this guy before. Identical. Yep. Yeah. So, um, so what's being said here? First of all, this guy here, all of this information, the Drupal Stone, is the identical to that of, do I have those stones here? Do I have my file here for that? Is identical to that of the Peruvian burial stones. You see that that Peruvian burial stone? I'm not, I'm not going to bring up my whole file of that. This Peruvian burial stone is shaped in the form of that of a dinosaur egg, and is stating in plain, simple, not language, but depiction that through the dinosaur came the rest of these creatures. And that this is what this is saying. Through the dinosaur came the birth of these creatures. And then it shows you a sequence of genetic bridgings where the monkey's involved. And it shows you exactly what's going on here, people. I can show you how the monkey was created. I can show you how the monkey was genetically bridged over, people. I can show you how the life forms after the monkey were bridged over, people. I can show you how man even has his ability to speak. You know why? Because all of this information is readily accessible. Not just extinctively, which I first actually came into knowing all of this stuff, but Understanding it instinctively gives you it in picture forms and allows you to see how you were created and you evolved. Now, where are we at here? Okay, this organism, I'm going to do another video. This organism that is right here, these organisms. Which I'm just telling you, one is male and one is female. And I'll, I can explain how I know that as well, too. Um, th let's go to the Nazca line, since I did bring up a Peruvian burial stone. Which is actually in the form of a dinosaur egg. Which also, all of those all of those stones are that are in the form of dinosaur eggs in, a Peru, in Peru, people. That are buried with the people, just like the Drupa stones. Now, are buried with little... Four feet high or three feet high, men. People, these stones tell that tell you who they genetically are. Hold on. Let me let me let me let me see what we got here. Where's my Peruvian? Oh, here you go, right here. Here's that file right here. People, let me let me let me flash do some flash right quick. Here, let's 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 go like this here. Now, in China, these discs are buried with four feet high people. In Peru, these stones, Peruvian burial stones, are buried with the dead. Now, I've identified these stones as mimicking that of dinosaur eggs, stating that through these creatures, and this is the reason why you see triceratops and these guys with knives in their hands, I mean, uh, axes in their, at their mouth, saying that we were genetically spliced, bridged with these creatures. We evolved from these creatures. 
We're genetically from them. Even on some of the stones, these guys that are with these dinosaurs look identical to the faces. Their faces look identical to that of the dinosaur from which they are on. Like here, look. They have the same likeness and skin of these creatures. So, they went through the trouble. Oh, hold on. You got two with their penises out here. Showing you that they genetically bridged over each other. That's what that means, two people. But... The thing about all of this is, is that these people are telling you through the egg of the dinosaur, we were created. Now, hold on. Let me see if I have, is this the one with it? Yeah. Look at, look at the, look at how the dinosaur actually starts to become, and, and if you look close enough, it will show you how in some cases where the body of the dinosaur was transforming to look almost to come into play and evolve to that of mankind. And later, I'm not going to go into it now because I'm losing time here, but you will see the faces. In fact, let me find one where the faces of these men actually are identical to that of the dinosaur from which they are on. I want to show you. Let me hold on. Let me show you. And then I'm going to come back to where we're at here. All right. This... This this is this is a this is an indication here. Look at how the woman with a breast out showing you look at them. Looking like the dinosaur of the creatures that are on these rocks. Now and do we have another all right, here you go here. This is the best example here. Look at this guy. This is the one that I like the best. See the dinosaur's head? Now look at this man's face. You know what he's stating by this? You see this? He's on the dinosaur. Now you know that mankind is not supposed to have to exist with dinosaurs. So what he's telling you, there's a dinosaur egg there. He's saying that he's spliced with the dinosaur genes. Look. He's bridged over, and then it shows you another mutation, a worm coming out of his body now. And now look, this is the gene that he's created, and it's coming bridged out of his body. And this is what is coming out from, from the dinosaur. I'm spliced with the dinosaur, and genetically now I have this creature's genes, these creature's genes in me, and this is what's coming out of my body now. This is the worm that is created, the genes, the sperm, the blood. This is what's created. Now, these are Peruvian burial stones. Now, people, what scientists cannot figure that part of that out? Now, here we are now and again with these stones, these discs, in China that are buried with people that are four feet high. And the Drupa stones. And now, again, archaeologists and geologists can't figure out that what is more important than, to a person than that of, the, of their identity, their genetic identity, and who they are. These stones, these burial stones, these burial discs is a record of how those people at that time that's in the ground, that's dead now, genetically became. And they were leaving a record behind. Look at what NASA has done in space. They sent that that um that, that time capsule out. Look at what they did behind the um, Mount Rushmore. The time capsules. They there's records to tell you who you genetically are. This is all of this is, people. This is not nothing from space. And I wish you assholes that actually are stating this would just quit. Quit. If you don't understand who you genetically are here in our world, then how in the world can you equate something? You have to look to our world first before you can look to space.
this is this is this is bizarre and it, I mean it's upsetting to be totally honest with you. The Drupal Stone disc shows you how mankind evolved from this beast, from this from these creatures, and eventually, well, from space, and eventually this guy was created. And then if you look closely, I can see wherever this is, there are multi-dimensional images that are created. And I know how they were created. I can show you apes here. There's the head of an ape. This guy, if you look, this guy has his hand outstretched on creatures, which you cannot see, but I can see, but I can show you. If you look here, there's a head here, chin coming around, and then it shows you another likeness. Right here under his arm, there's the face of an ape right there. There's an eye, there's an eye, there's a nose, and there's a mouth. Hold on. Let me, let me see if I have that drawn up for you. Yeah, I do have it drawn out. There are multi-dimensional images because we, in that time, in earlier times, and now, there are presences of multi-dimensional beings. And they can be seen. And I can see them through my paranormal experience and encounter. Look here, people. I have it drawn out there for you. See the head of that beast right there? And then right up underneath here, see that eye, eye, nose, mouth. And I can do this throughout the whole group of song. Now I know that there's writing over here. And then look here at this creature. You're probably wondering why this creature is up and his head turned back. There are other creatures, multi-dimensional images that can be lifted off of this stone, this, this, this disc. Off the surface of this is multi-dimensional images. Now, what other multi-dimensional images are there? First of all, let me go. I'm going to show you some other multi-dimensional images. But it's my position in Nazca, those those Nazca lines, that this creature here is also an organism, not a spider, but an organism, just as. And if you can see, with that, I see multi-dimensional images. And you see I added faces to that. Man and woman. Man and then woman. You know what, people? Because that is what this is. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Here. Right there. Now... It gets deeper than that because if you look closely on these organisms, they have faces. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Let me give you some faces here that I can actually see. I'm looking at this from upside down. Hold on. I'm going to show you some faces that I can actually see. Here's a, here's a few here. They are morphine faces. Chin, mouth, nose, eye, eye. There's a face there. Eye, eye, nose, mouth, chin. And they're shown morphing down. And there's a pattern. Now, not just as there's one, two, three faces there, but there's a whole face. Can I turn that up to give you a whole face? Let me see if I can turn it. Now, I just showed you three faces. Now let me see if I can give you a whole face. And I can do this. Let me see if I can give you the whole face without distorting this. You know, it's a shame because I can't see it upside down if I look directly at it. Oh yeah. Let me see if I can. Let me see if I can do this. I'm done. I'm doing this. Look at this. I'm coming around the chin. Coming up. And there's a mouth there, two people. There's a mouth. There's a nose. There's a forehead. And there's an eye here. And it shows you one of those. Legs here coming into the eye of that being there. Right there. What do you call that? A technic. forgot what you call that damn thing. Like an octopus arm. But there's a mouth. You see that being there? And then in that being's face right there are three others that I just showed you. Multi-dimensional images and it shows you a morphine pattern. 
which goes over here. So let me show you some of the other faces that I can actually see. These multi-dimensional images of these of these beings. The likeness that is here in this center. You see that right there? There's another one there. Look, it's here. And then if you turn it it has other faces on there and I'm not going to go into detail because it's actually difficult to show you what these are but there's actually a image of a head of guess what of what other there's a woman and there's a pig now now check this out now all of this is in there and there's an ape here there's an ape there there's an ape there as you can plainly let me bring that in it so you can actually see that I got the, I got them highlighted there's an ape there and there's an ape there people then there's the image of that of two pigs and then there's a woman with a pig's face all in here now I wonder if I can bring that I can't actually see it now I'm gonna have to draw them out later on for you people but all of that is there and it is all in sequential order on how these beings contributed to the likeness of this being and it's coming in from both sides and it's all verifiable it's verifi verifiable to other things and uh, um, as well now what am I thinking about here because I lost actually lost train of thought and I wanted to show you something oh that being is being I'm going to show you who that being is in a, in a minute. Where's my... Oh, here you go, here. Let me show you something. I'm going to show you something about this, on this group of stone. About these... beings here. This is... In Sweden, Sweden, these stones were found. This is what this actually is, people. What I just showed you is the same thing that is actually right here. You see that? The woman. You see that right there? That that woman there that I showed you there and the face is here. You know what this is showing you? The same thing in Sweden. This is these are stones. All you gotta do is Google Sweden um um stone glyphs found, ancient glyph stones found or glyphs found. You know who that is, right? It's the face of Medusa with a bunch of snakes coming out of her hair. And then, if you don't want to believe that, that's what these are. These squiggly bodies are all serpents, snakes. The same thing. Look, another stone. Now, hold it though. Why is this stone looking like a monument or something that we would actually find at, at a graveyard? What is on the stones, people, at the graveyards of our loved ones? Their name, their date of death, I mean their date of birth and their date of death. And it's an identifier who they are. These people took it a step further and had the genetics of the, because that was more important. Genetically who you are and the genes in which they created and bridged. So they wanted you to know their genetic contribu contribution to who you are today. So this is what these records are about. Now I'm going to show you another picture here. Now here's an artist, an unknown artist. And if you Google again, the faces of Medusa. Look at this, people. I'm going to show you. I'm going to see if I can bring this in for you. Here's an unknown artist made a creation of Medusa right here. And this is a pretty convincing picture here too, by the way, people. I like the way they have her head there. Now, look at this. Her screaming face. Now, I don't know the artist, but if you Google images of Medusa, you'll find this. Now, you see her screaming and all of these snakes and stuff all up squiggling around her hair. What you don't see is the multi-dimensional images that showed you how Medusa came into existence in the first place and how she got to this likeness because over here are morphine faces you see that witch-like woman there just underneath her ear there's an eye 
there's a nose. I highlighted it. There's her reptilian-like mouth right there. Yeah, reptilian-like mouth right there. And there's her chin. And then, if you cut that face off, right, hold on to me. If you cut that face off right there, there's another face right beside it, right there. Eye and face. You see that? Right there? It shows you how genes created through the reptile subsequently calls for this likeness and there is a genetic blueprint that shows you how it all occurred. Now, I don't want to bring that picture back up again of Jesus hanging in Nervy Hall where it's supposed to be, he's supposed to be emerging from a nuclear explosion. But if you see my video on that, you will see why the snake is referenced. And that is even of Christianity and how we were bridged over these creatures. In fact, most of the creatures of our world are prehistoric creatures. Um, um, and even our, some of our domestic creatures of this world today, you will see how we are more linked to them than you could ever possibly know. Because on each and every continent that is that was cleverly sequestered in order for these genetic manipulations and bridgings to take place, it shows how these creatures contributed genetically to altering our states and our likenesses from their original state of that of monkey and ape to that of such likenesses of these and the different cultures and likenesses that we have today in our um, in our in our culture groups globally. My name is Jerome Wright. You're watching my Jeronification channel, and people. I ask that you not be stupid. If stones are found buried with the people, then it's not because an alien landed and, and said, okay, we want to bury them. This is our creation and we want to put the stone up in there. It's because there is a culture, there is an ancient civilization of peoples, of many peoples, that we knew nothing about, but yet they genetically contributed to who we are today. And the reason why we don't know about them is because those, the privileged few, select few, that enjoy the knowledge of this are keeping you in the dark because they gain from it not just scientifically but financially and then just do the having the power behind all of that they control you because they have your identity in the palms of their hand it's like you now being there and not knowing who your true mother and father is and you're living with in foster care Knowing that you do not belong here because you look genetically different. Things just seem genetically wrong about this whole thing. You do not click with this mom and dad that they say or is your mom and dad. And you sense that something is wrong. Well, people, this is what you need to feel about this. Look at how this arm is stretched out. And then you see it going over to, look at the head here. Eye, eye, nose and mouth, outstretched chin and neck. Look at this, people. These multidimensional images I can see, and it has a pattern. And then the same image that is right here, it's not a random pattern, but it's also right here, people. Look, and with a snake like creature coming out of his mouth and shown branch over to this, and then the same thing again is over here. There's a chain of events that I can see. on this this burial stone this is the same identical thing with the Peruvian burial stones these artifacts that are buried with these people are identifiers 
to who they are. Just like if you go out and look at your local cemetery people, the headstones that are out on top of the surface, these people put these identifiers inside with their loved ones or with the people that they were bearing. The same thing is happening in Egypt. Globally. And we will continue to find these things. They are identifiers of who these people were. You know, there's a thing called common sense. Here's another, um, because this is a um, like a colored version of that image. Here's a, here's a black and white of it. And there's a secret about also about these stones and all about these things that I that I can tell you about these multi-dimensional images that I know about this. And that's also is I'm going to keep it. I know I always say I'm going to I'm going to keep something secret, but can't let the cat completely out of the bag. There's more about this that needs to be known. Oh, here you go, right there. And that's what it looks like in a black and white version. But there's something about this that actually um, that can be said as well too and you know there's something else that I, I well you know yeah there's something else but I'm not going to bring that up as well too I was going to say something else about this but I'm not going to it's no different than me taking a clay tablet or taking a stone something that's going to last forever what lasts is pretty much forever stones I mean, they're not going to, like, I can't take and write down my name on a piece of paper and put it in there with my, um, with my body if I'm going to die, when I die, because you know that that's not going to last. So, what do they do? They take stones, things that are going to last forever, for many, many, many millennia, in the event that they get dug up or they get found, it tells you who they are. So, they put it on stone, people, and they show you, they go, they go through a, 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 a process that make it, that, to where it's going to last. These people have been around for hundreds and thousands of years, possibly even millions of years, and they're and they're stating that we that they don't found other they don't found other people's grave sites that like like we're finding theirs now. So they know what it took to actually what needs what what lasts, what had the staying power, and what messages they had to put on here. So they took their little. And when they made their little insignias and, 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 and descriptions of who they are and genetically were, they put it on things that they knew that would last for some time. And then when they put it in there with them, they were confident that it would be found one day. Not by, and but not misinterpreted by those like Eric Van Daniken and other um, theorists, you know what I mean? Zowie Hawass, you know what I mean? I mean, those people are probably saying to, to themselves, saying, fool, what the hell is you doing? This is not the message that I intended to be left behind for you to take it. Tell my true story like Jerome Wright is doing right now. We evolved from the dinosaur. I just showed you on the Peruvian stones what they're stating. In Angkor Wat, you see the Triceratops there on that, on, that, on that column. And on that column, there's other mutations of creatures that show you from... Where there's a likeness of man there, there's a likeness of a man there with a triceratops. And in between the man and the triceratops, there's other mutations of creatures that were created. That are on these spirally like tails, which represents that of the snake, the dinosaur tail. All of this, the reptilian, their presence, their genetics. It's like a, I would like to say a... Um, a genetic, not a genetic tunnel, um, uh, like a genetic strand. And it shows you a strand stretched out and it shows you all of the creatures and the mutations and the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the bloodlines. It shows you the directions of these creatures. And archaeologists and geologists and, 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 and scholars are taking this thing and twisting it around and then we're leaving the door open for theorists to theorize of what is right there before your eyes. It's just like me going to you to, to one of your loved ones, to your grandmom or your grandmom, um, grandfather's um, 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 graveyard or their gravesite, and 
on the on their headstone is their name, Jane Doe. And here we find it. Let's say I find it. Uh, or they, or, or, let's just say life starts all over again for whatever reason. A meteorite, let's call it a meteorite because that's a, the favorite for everybody saying, hit our world and right now all of our world people just ended. And I found now, now we're evolving all over again. We're starting from, 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 evolution is starting all over again. I find a graveyard. Your grandmother's name is on there, Jane Doe. Now I'm misinterpreting in her what it is. Oh, I don't know what this is. Must be aliens that came in. And um, and uh, now I'm, this is your grandmother we're talking about now. That, but the reason I don't understand this language because as life started all over again, there's a different language. There's a new beginning. Everything is different from that of what was before. So we're different now. The mutations are different. The like. So I find your grandmother's gravesite. Her name is there. And all, and I done twisted it and turned it into something else as if she was delivered from another planet here. That's what's happening now. That's what's happening in Egypt. That's what's happening in, in, in China. That's what's happening globally right now. But you know what transcends times? Not the language, the writings. Because they can be misinterpreted. By misinterpreters, by people that, in some cases, intentionally try to misinterpret these messages to keep us from seeing the truth, which is, I believe, is absolutely the case in most instances to, of today in these ancient ancient finds of these artifacts. But images, people, images transcends times. Images speaks for all languages, and through your common sense, your common sense should tell you that. We're finding all of these these dinosaurs with images of mankind because of the exact reason that I told you. They're showing us that genetically we evolved from this creature. And today I can show you that in Christianity it shows you how this creature, you see how this creature is here now? Living and thriving on this rock with this mankind. Because it's saying that genetically, this creature was still in man. This is how man became. And then in Christianity, you know what they're showing you through that? If you Google the image of um, St. George and all of that, they're showing you with a knife or a sword through this creature in their paintings. You know why? Because, because it's showing you that they didn't slay the dragon physically. They slayed the dragon genetically. So there are records that actually go from here to that and now in Christianity where they're showing you that where this, this creature genetically thrived in mankind in this era, in the era of what that of St. George was, it showed you how they genetically slayed the dragon, the reptile, the genet reptile genes, the ge genetics of this beast from our system. Not just that creature, but it also shows you in the ancient history of everything that is Christianity, how they genetically extracted the presence, the dominating presence of that, of the black gene, of ape and of Africans from their blood, which calls for the later likenesses. And this is what this is all about. My name is Jerome Wright. I'm going to end this video because I'm getting upset. It seems like I'm just a part of all of this. And... It seems like these beings are within me, and this is what is fueling me, and now fueling my anger. It just seems, I mean, it's like I'm connected to all of this, and it just seems like I'm just becoming more and more drawn into it. And it just seems like the spirits of these beings and everything else is just within me. And it's going to be a change, people, because I'm going to keep shoving this down their throats until this thing is actually mainstream and the world knows what's going on. Thank you. And thank you for watching my video and please share it with others.